G'day guys, Shane here. If you're looking to purchase the iPhone 13 Pro Max or the Galaxy S22 Ultra, well, this is a video you probably want to watch. These two phones are the flagships of the big sellers right now. They've both got really large pixel sizes, making them the undisputed king of the night. But which one of these phones is the best in low light situations? What I did, I went up to the Gold Coast and I used both of these phones in six different scenarios that most people are going to use these phones in low light conditions. I'm not talking about astrophotography, I'm talking about night mode, portrait mode, handheld night mode, night mode on a tripod, some photos of buildings, night video, and a couple of other things in there as well. So let's have a look at what we found. All of these photos, on the left hand side, we're going to find the iPhone photos, on the right hand side are all the Samsung photos. So you can see as we go along, the good detail between these two phones. I've got to be honest though, I was blown away by what I found with these two phones. First, let's look at the portrait mode at night. This is a typical scenario where most people are going to go for dinner, go to a club, something like that, and later on you're going to take some photos of people in portrait mode at night. If you ever look at both of these photos, on the face of it, they both look pretty bloody good. And well, to be honest, you'd be happy with either of them. As we get closer though, as I zoom into Sarah's face, that's Sarah, my wife there, you can see the iPhone is starting to lose some of the quality as we get closer. The Samsung, it really does nail this absolutely well in night mode, portrait mode. So at this stage, I'm going to give this photo here to the Samsung. Next up is handheld night mode. We took a few different photos here just to test that one wasn't, just the scenario wasn't the winner here. I actually took a few different photos in different scenarios and these are the results that I've got. These photos here at the Versace Hotel, incidentally about 12 years ago, that's actually where we got married right there. But I took both of these photos at about three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that's right, I just don't sleep. Both of these are handheld night mode. The iPhone went for 10 seconds, the Samsung, it went for about six seconds handheld. And look at the difference in these two photos. The, the difference is huge. We can zoom right in there to the head on the logo, on the Versace logo, and you can see how much better, or how much detail is in that little sculpture there. The detail in it is just, it's just mind blowing. Look at the gravel, not the gravel, look at the, the pavers there at the front of it. It's just, it's just bloody amazing. And this wasn't a one-off. This consists, I found this to be consistent through all the photos that I took with both of these phones. When I went down to the beach at night after a meal, so I got Sarah to go down to the water, to the edge of the water there on the sand, and the results are very, very similar. They're two different sorts of results though. The sand on the iPhone looks better. Sarah in both of those photos, well, she looks pretty well the same. So as far as people go in this photo that I'm doing here, it looks pretty good. The difference is the water and the amount of noise that's through the iPhone photo. The Samsung is virtually void of any noise. It's, it's just bloody remarkable. Next up, we've got night mode on a tripod. So I took a tripod out, set it up, put a phone on the tripod, took exactly the same photo with the second phone, and these are the results that I've got. You can tell here that the computational photography really started to play a part. You look at the water on the Samsung photo versus the water on the iPhone photo, you can see there that it's really uh, well played a big part in this. Both of these photos, to be honest, you're gonna be happy with both of them. But I think the Samsung photo's got more detail in that jetty than definitely more detail in the water. So in this one here as well, I'm gonna give that to the Samsung. Night mode video, or video at night. Well, if you're an iPhone user, you know that you're plagued by these little green dots here, and in this phone here, it's no different. But guess what? The Samsung does it too, and I've said this many, many times to Apple users, our iPhone users over the years, that hey, most phones do this, and here is proof, living proof right now, that both of these phones are plagued by that green lens flare that we see really badly on the iPhone. They both work really, really well. You've just got to be mindful of that lens flare that you're going to get with both of these phones. Architectural sort of shots. And I'm talking about you're out at night, see a building, let's take a photo of that. It looks pretty cool with the way it's lit up. Both of these, both of these photos are taken of exactly the same building, exactly the same time, you know, within 10 seconds or so of each other, and look at the detailed difference here. What I found here is that the Samsung doesn't really care how much contrast is in that photo. The iPhone, it really seems to care how much contrast there is. The detail in these two photos, 
is just mind-blowingly different. The Samsung just cleaned it up. There's virtually no noise. You can see the park lane down the bottom here on both photos. You go to the top of the iPhone one, you don't see it. Go to the top of the Samsung one, and you can still read what's there. But look at the noise that's come out of that iPhone. Keep in mind, these are handheld photos, and well, the difference is just staggering. 10 seconds exposure time on the iPhone, six seconds on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, and the difference is just huge. It's just, it's amazing. I was really blown away by this. Next up, we've got long exposures. And with both of these phones, they don't do them out of the box very well. You're going to need an app. Well, sure, you can use the live mode on the iPhone and the result is going to be meh. But you're going to need to get an app on either one of these phones to get some really good detail out of it. On the iPhone, we've got Reflex app with a long exposure mode. We've got even longer app, which is the longer exposure which shoots raw and everything. It's a very good app as well. On the um, S22 though, you're going to need to download a couple of apps and it works a little bit differently. So it's a lot more involved. It's not as simple as just putting, pushing a button, walking away, coming back and collecting your photos. It's not as simple as that. You're gonna to need to set up an app like Intervolometer app, take a series of photos, then bring them into another app, either Light Trails app or Motion Stack app, and it's going to let you do those long exposures. So they both do some pretty good results, but the ease of use in the iPhone, for me, that just wins. Which one of these is better? And we've got to look at this with some perspective, and let's be brutally honest. A few years ago, you would be saying, if I could do this with a phone, you'd be bloody nuts. There's no way you thought this was going to be possible. But we can do some amazing things with phones now, and these two phones are really proving that. Sure, the S22 Ultra is better than the iPhone in the scenarios that I threw out there tonight, but not always is that the case. And we'll talk about that in another video. I've got astrophotography coming up with the S22 Ultra, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're gonna take photos like this with this new phone. The moon phase is not playing well with me at the moment, so in about a week and a half to two weeks, we're gonna have that sort of video. If you want to see these photos, I've got a select few of them over there at shamemosson.com. You can download those and see for yourself just how good these are. That's it for today, guys. Catch you later.